Yep. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Light comes at then. <laughs> so, my name is Sharon Thompson. As some of you in the room know me um, as a Labour councillor, and also I'm the cabinet member, the new cabinet member for homes and neighbourhoods. So, within my portfolio, there is housing, which includes um, homelessness, it includes um, the, um, the policy around private rented sector, it includes parks and allotments, bereavement services, so it's cemeteries, the mortuary, the, the, the um, this court system there, and then also localisation, which is pretty much, which we've just gone out to consultation on, it's finished, and that's around how does the city engage and interact with um, local groups and organisations and look at how can we deliver services more locally that meet local needs. But um, tonight I was asked to come and speak about housing and I just want to say thank you for inviting me to come along. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the things that are on the horizon when it comes to housing in the city, but also the challenges that we're facing and the things that we are particularly keen to be asking government to address in terms of the citizens of Birmingham and what it means for them. So when it comes to housing, we all know there's a huge need for new houses and development, and you can see that by the strain of the lack of housing provision that we've got when it comes to homelessness, more families presenting as homeless, huge amount of numbers that are on the waiting list, and a lot of people that need upgrades and moves in homes. But we've calculated that by 2031, Birmingham's population will increase by around 156,000 people. Now in terms of housing that equates to nearly 89,000 homes, new additional homes that will be needed within the city and as you can imagine that is a huge challenge for Birmingham because we already have shortages of land, we've already got a housing crisis that we're dealing with at the moment but through the Birmingham development plan we've looked at this and we think by the lifetime of the plan which reaches up to 2031 Birmingham should be able to comfortably be able to have built 51,000, 51, just over 51,000 of those homes, but that still will leave us with a shortfall of over 37,000, so that's a huge number that we're looking at. And that number would need to be met by other local authorities beyond the city boundaries. So that is a lot about talking and working more closely with the other local authorities that around the perimeters of Birmingham. But one of the things we do know is that we do need high quality, high quality homes, because as we all know, homes and where you live affects your uh, mental well-being, it affects your whole health. Um, and we need to secure the city in terms of the economic development of it and the prosperity and what that means for the people that live in the city um, and to help the city grow. So between 2011 and 2000, 2011 and 2018, the delivery has been quite strong in terms of Birmingham, because Birmingham's managed to um, build, or we've managed to secure 14,047 dwellings that have been completed, and that's part of the requirement of um, 14,100. So we had a shortfall of 53 dwellings. So there's still a need for us to continue to build. It's not easy in terms of the pressures in terms of land and also the current market. So over that same period, 3,384 affordable dwellings were completed through the plan. And um, that's in line with the um, policy of seeking 35% affordable homes because we want to make sure that in Birmingham that we don't just have developers that come in and build purely private housing, actually we've got to think of the affordability for the city, the affordability for everybody that lives here, because the reality of it is when we look at the current pressures, it's social housing that we really need, it's affordable social housing, and that's what we've really got to focus on, so that's why we're trying to make sure that it's affordable for the city, but when it comes to developers, we can attract the developers to develop in the city, but they have to know that we have to have an emphasis on affordable housing, not just on the market for the private sector. So that's something that we think is really, really key. So in 2017, in January, the plan was adopted. Um, and it doesn't just look at housing, it looks at it in the wider context of what we would call place. So it's about you know parks and everything else that affect people where they're living. It's not just about putting high density of housing in one particular area or anything like that. We've got to look at the bigger picture. 
But including in that, with housing, we've got to think about the employment, we've got to think about retail development, and also the um, infrastructure and environmental enhancements, because those play a part in terms of the city's growth. Because if we're going to have all these people living here, we need to have thriving economies, we've got to have jobs for people, and we want to make it the best city that we can possibly. So that's really, really important for us. So um, most of you may know about Birmingham Municipal Housing Trust. Are you familiar with that? No? Are you familiar with it, the trust? Yeah. Yep, yeah? okay. So the council, through its trust, is contributing towards the housing delivery, and the trust obviously is... Birmingham City Council's arm in terms of its building developer and in terms of um, BMHT it is the biggest council housing builder in the country not just the West Midlands or the city but again even though we are the biggest build council housing builder in the country we still have huge pressures in terms of our numbers so we still got a lot of work to continue with and since 2009 BMHT has built over 1,700 new homes for rent and 1,300 for outright sale. So there's been a combination between the two of what we've been building in Birmingham. And, you know, in terms of averages, that's between 400, five, 400 to 500 a year in terms of properties, which is pretty good in terms of stable growth. But again, we also know the pressures that we've got in Birmingham when it comes to the continuing build. And just to put that into context, when I'm saying we have an average between 400 and 500 built by um, Birmingham Municipal Housing Trust, compared to the housing associations, the housing associations on average are bringing through about 50. So that is a huge difference in terms of the numbers of what the council has been able to deliver, which we think is quite good. But within that narrative, where we talk about the things that we're doing in terms of growth, in terms of the positive narrative of what the council's doing, the numbers that we're building, there is the significant challenges that we all know that we're facing. And um, the biggest challenge for me in this portfolio is around accommodation and population growth. We know with the figures of homelessness, we have huge numbers of families in temporary accommodation that we don't particularly want to be there, we want them in permanent homes, we have people on the streets, we have people who are in overcrowded situations and that's going to be a significant challenge for the city moving forward and if we don't continue to think about and have an emphasis on building affordable housing, social housing, council housing, that is just going to increase, we're not going to really, um, we're not going to be able to deliver against that, we're not going to pull down the pressures because if you think we have thousands of people currently on the waiting list at the moment, and if you look at the turnaround of council properties, we probably turn around over 3,000 at the moment per year. So we need to continue to make sure that we build because a lot of people tell us they want social housing. They want to feel that they've got a secure tenancy. Some people don't feel secure in private landlords. Some people do, but you know, we know that when it comes to homelessness, um, the increased pressure of people becoming homeless is sometimes because of short tenancies. <coughs> and we need to work through that. So social housing is absolutely important to us. And also having land available, that's a challenge for us. Um, there's a need for more land across the city and what we have been looking at more recently is where we've got smaller sites that we used previously. So through Cabinet over the last month or so, we, I took a report forward to talk about turning 41 sites into housing. But these sites were smaller sites that included things that were old garage courts and actually some of them were hubs of antisocial behaviour but we could put housing on there and it would make good homes for people in good neighbourhoods so we're looking at that and over the next month we're looking at some larger schemes to bring forward but again it's a challenge and it has to be attractive to builders to want to come in and develop in the city and um, also looking at what's happening in neighbouring local authorities that puts pressure on as well. So um, we want to make sure that we're providing a mixture and I think we have a huge pressure when it comes to three and four plus bedrooms, particularly for families, there is a shortage of that and we also need to look at the one bedrooms but the three to four plus, that's where we're finding there's a lot more larger families now, particularly those that want to, that are growing and also those that are in temporary accommodation, that's where we find there's a lack and a shortage, so that's what we need to focus on, so that's one of our key challenges. 
And those challenges we can look to address from Birmingham's perspective, and we can do as much as a council, but actually there's a lot that we need from the government because there's a lot of pressures that come from other places. One of the things is around flexibility. One of the things we've asked the government, we've written for, is flexibility over the right to buy. Because councils at the moment are allowed to use up to 30% of the right to buy receipt on the cost of new homes, but actually it's not enough. And we need to be able to have more flexibility around that. And okay, that might work in some areas, but it's not, it's not what's working in Birmingham and in the West Midlands. So we're really asking the government for more flexibility about the way we use the right to buy receipts. We're asking them to rebalance their HMG, the HMG spend, and that's about the way that the government spends on housing. So they favour, we're asking them to favour capital instead of always revenue, because at the moment the government's spending 95% of the housing budget on the housing, housing benefit, and that's to the tune of 23 billion per year and only 5% towards building new homes. So what we're suggesting to them is, is if they looked at readdressing and looked at um, providing ways of higher grants, because if they invested more in building properties and there was more properties, we could then start to lower the market and have lower rents, so then that some of the pressures that would have gone on the housing benefit means it doesn't hit the people in the pocket, because what we're finding, there are so many people across the country who, because the rents are so high, they're having to pay additional on top of their benefits and things like that. So that's one of the things we've been asking the government to look at readdressing. And then also positive encouragement to councils to build new homes. You know, they don't make it very attractive. It's about how can we make it more sustainable um, and really encourage more delivery, because if we had more positive messages coming out around that from the government, it would mean that more people and more councils would be building more homes and actually it would help to stabilise the market up and down across the country. As many of us know, as everybody's talked about so far, we've got the Commonwealth Games coming to Birmingham um, and one of the things that we wanted to make sure with the housing side of it was that we was a part of the legacy and that's where we really welcome the fact that the government are putting finance into the Commonwealth Village which will be used for, in the first instance, will be used for the um, athletes to use the properties. And then once the games are over, those properties will be turned into housing. So that will help us address the housing need. We know that recently the Prime Minister talked about removing the HRA borrowing cap. And for some people, they think that this was a great thing. And although we might welcome that, we also think it, it still provides us with limited scope. We're already borrowing. We don't want to continuously have councils in debt and we need to be paying that back. So um, we're already using our borrowing powers to ensure that we can build more houses as it is. So that lift in the cap hasn't really benefited Birmingham in that way. It might do in other local authorities, but it hasn't had the impact that they've really talked about. And then we go on to the national housing crisis, which I've spoke about already, which is around the homelessness. And although the government have introduced the um, Homeless Reduction Act and, you know, the council is committed to um, embedding its principles and we fully support looking at prevention because we do want to prevent people from getting into homelessness in the first place. We've also got to look at the fact that we're dealing with the crisis that's ahead of us as well. So. Um, we're working with them more to deal with that, but one of the messages that I'm sending back to the government, and I've written to the government at the time, is that a lot of the time they're allocating funding to local authorities to do projects. So we're talking things like um, the Housing First is one instance, it would be great, it would be a great project for us to do for three years. There's other projects that they're doing, but what they're not looking at is the systemic issues. So the things that are pushing people into homelessness in the first place. And if they dealt with some of the policies at a national level, it would help to alleviate people from actually falling into that. So we've seen so many people coming to us because they've got themselves into more financial difficulty because of things like universal credit. And it is no fault of their own. It's about the way that the government has driven the policies. So we really are pushing them to say yes. We're happy for you to give us money to build on these, the, these programmes, but you really need to be putting some focus and some investment into looking at the larger policy issues that are affecting people when it comes to homelessness. So
So um, fire safety is another big thing for us in the city. And following on from Grenfell, nobody expected anything like that. No one could imagine a fire like that and the devastation that's caused. And one of the things that Birmingham has done, which you will all know of, is that we've committed to putting retrofitted sprinklers in all of our tower blocks across the city. So that's 213 tower blocks. And with that comes a significant financial challenge for us. But we've committed to doing that because we're thinking that putting people's safety has to come first, but also people feeling safe within their properties as well. And that's really important. But there's a financial implication for us now that we've made that decision. So we are continuously lobbying the government to say that actually they should be putting some funding aside to help people with this because the government have said that they will put funding aside when it comes to cladding and when it comes to some of the other fire safety measures we have to apply to them and they will look at it and judge it on its merit but when we talk to them about the retrofitted sprinklers they say mm, it hasn't quite fitted the criteria so the answer has been no. Croydon I went to visit Croydon last week um, and they have already started the programme to fit retrofitted um, sprinklers um, and I went up there to speak to some of their politicians but also to look at the block that they're fitting them in and see what impact will that have on residents when we start rolling out our programme. And I think as much as when Grenfell happened we all saw it on the television and it was the most soul destroying thing to watch. Um, it really, really hit home for me when I went to Croydon because I, um, there was a man that invited us into his home to show us the sprinklers that had been fitted in his property by Croydon Council and talk to us about how you know that made him feel. And the thing that stuck out for me the most was he said, um, can you see across there? And he opened his windows and he said, can you see the block across there? And I couldn't see anything in the distance. And he said, you'd need, you'd need like binoculars. He says, but... Um, Brentford Towers over there and he said and on the night of the fire at six o'clock in the morning I was watching it on the news hearing about this fire I got up to draw my curtains and I saw the thick black smoke in in the horizon and he said that will that trauma will sit with me for the rest of my life and he says but knowing a few weeks later that Croydon had turned around and said actually we're committing to putting these sprinklers in the blocks it made him feel a lot more at ease and again that really enforced for me that actually we have made the right decision to put the sprinklers in not everybody agreed with it when we said we was going to do it at the time and you know they said you know scientifically you know does this prove that it will save or not save but we never expected a fire like Grenfell and we've got to prepare for every eventuality and make sure that tenants are safe and then also we've got the Hackett review that came out recently on the backbone of that and there was a number of recommendations for local authorities um, across the country and I'm firmly of the belief um, that we should be lobbying the government that when it comes to the recommendations around the Hackett review that the building regulations they are really properly watched and, and you know scrutinised and made sure that they are delivered properly and that those are taking part in making sure that fire safety and all the recommendations are put into place that they are really truly regulated that it's not something that slips off the agenda because this is absolutely important to people's lives and when you speak to tenants that's what they want to know and one of the things that people often say to me when I've met with tenants groups is you know sometimes local authorities councils they talk about tenants and, and properties but actually this is our homes and if we was getting somebody to come in and do some work on my home I would want the best person, I'd want to see the certificates, I want to know that they've, they've got the right training and actually you're just phoning up and saying someone's coming around at four o'clock to come and do this and it's an appointment. So we must make sure that we push the government to make sure that this is firmly regulated and actually that the tenants' voices are properly heard and that is really, really essential for us. Um, the housing liaison boards are something that Birmingham's had for over 25 years, I'm told. So I was very young when those were originally set up. But they have been going for a long time and we've had a lot of input and I've met with, I've gone along to the city board a couple of times and I've met with a number of them in local wards. And it's absolutely essential that we continue to listen to the voices of residents, but actually include them at every single layer and, and, and at every layer that we can possibly. 
Now, when the um, government recently put out their consultation on housing, on social housing, we made sure that we spoke to the liaison boards, the city liaison boards, and actually they took the decision that they wanted to make their own response to government as well. So as well as us doing one as a council, we made sure that you know residents had the opportunity to do that as well. So for me, I think it's really important that we continue to put these key messages to the government. Um, our MPs need to also make sure that they support and lobby where they are in government because that's what they're meant to be doing for us and Jack Drome has been really instrumental when it comes to the sprinklers and I know that uh, Liam Byrne has been instrumental when it comes to particularly around um, the homelessness but they've all had input along the way. So um, I think it's a hugely important agenda but Birmingham has got significant challenges ahead of it in terms of the housing that we need to get into place and also trying to deal with the housing crisis at the same time, particularly around the homelessness. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm.